Comiskey bragged that he was putting together the greatest ball team ever and sent his business agent with a blank check and instructions to bring me back this fellow Jackson. Greatest of them all was Shoeless Joe Jackson, who was uh, known to be one of the greatest, most natural hitters and baseball players of all time. It was said that Babe Ruth, who came in the years that followed him, thought that Jackson's swing was such perfection that he tried to copy it. Joseph Jefferson Jackson, who would ultimately fall prey to the sins of the big city, was an illiterate mill hand playing on a factory team in South Carolina. When scouts for Connie Mack's Philadelphia Athletics discovered him, he was named Shoeless Joe because he'd once played in his socks when a new pair of shoes proved too tight. Connie Mack's men convinced Jackson to sign a contract and put him on a train headed north. When the train stopped in Greenville, Jackson, lonely and apprehensive, got off and headed home. He got along finally, principally because he was so bloody good. And when you're that good, everybody respects you even if you can't read and write. Comiskey paid $65,000 for Shoeless Joe Jackson in cash and trades. It's these new shoes. I've always been an Adidas guy myself. <laughs> oh, hey Joe. How you feeling today? You have a snapper? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Don't believe it. Go, girls, saddle up. It's time to play. Wait, aren't those Joe's shoes? Dun dun dun. Well, I spent some time in the mud field night, watching it from the bench. You know, I took some lumps when the mighty case struck out. So say, hey, Willie, tell the cow. What the heck is he doing? He ain't got any shoes on! You want to say? You want to say? He's the best ball player since Brett Ball! Brett Farmer, idiot, he's from Mrs.